Peace. This is a meat and potato sorcery production starring myself, the Water Alchemist, and today's topic is Dragon World. What to look for when you are trying to become a practitioner of dragon magic. So, let's get into it. Now, oftentimes because of the tumultuous history between dragons and humanity, you have various clans, some are benevolent and some are malevolent because of the experiences that they have had with humans on this planet so if you're ever going to have a guardian dragon appointed to you it will usually be a hatchling or a very young dragon dragons usually don't reach maturity until they're over a thousand years of age and all dragons don't have wings because dragons can bend the elements they don't need wings to fly and dragons exist on the astral plane. They come from another planet, another world. So usually if they are going to make contact because some hold out some hope for humanity, usually they will appoint a youngling to you. Now you have to do a path working and basically that's a guided meditation and you will travel on the astral. And usually if you take a liking to a young dragon and it's vice versa the elder dragon will oversee it but basically you can form a partnership because dragons are adepts and very skilled at magic so they can help you and if a youngling does work with you they can be very playful so if you're not dealing with a trickster spirit like I said they're attracted to quartz crystals but also any type of jewelry that's shiny so if it's not a trickster, 9 out of 10, if you are working with a youngling, they probably took your jewelry out of curiosity. Now, how do they use a form of communication? Usually, the form of a dragon can form in clouds. Dragons are very attracted and like clouds. So if you see a dragon form in the clouds, that's a message for you. If no one else sees it, that's irrelevant, as long as you see it. And also because their language is hard to kind of follow, let's just say they go by like harps or flutes or whatever. Their language is like harmony. So if you play instrumental music or a form of jazz or even opera, this is another thing that dragons like. They like that very much. It's very important because they are very high on honor and they can mind probe. So don't think that you're going to lie to them because they're already not so much looking at you, but through you, your aura and their mind probing you to see if you have honorable intentions. So when you're working with even a young dragon, show the utmost respect and look at them as a partner. They're not your pets and they're not your servants. So it's very important to know when working with them. So you can communicate with young dragons as well as some elders. Even though they're a little bit leery, you can do this on the astral plane. Like I said, with guided meditation. And you also can utilize crystals that will draw them in every time. Playing instrumental music. And also when you work with a young dragon, they can be playful. So look forward to that. So, this is episode one of Dragon World and getting involved in dragon magic. So, with that, that is your meat and potato sorcery for the day. I am the Water Alchemist. Be water, my friends. Peace.